Two bright prospects, two fastest, two fastest, fast players, two winners, two champions, two prospects. The most awaited match of the competition so far. Tell a friend to tag a friend to come and watch Jinte versus Caesar. Live commentary is starting shortly. Welcome once again if you're just joining in. This has been the most eagerly awaited match of the competition so far. I have to pass my apologies to those who are watching Ibra versus Kile. I have to I had to move the camera for two reasons that this match was so much anticipated but also the fact that I was not impressed by Achilles dressing for the camera. I pass my apologies once again in advance. Still, we shall start with the match. The lag has been done. Jinte has won it and he nominates to break. I have to remind you that yesterday before we went to sleep, he came to me and said he is killing Caesar today. 
Jinte to break. A fair break it is, yellow ball is sunk, table is open. The yellows are not just less, they are fewer, but there is no obvious yellow at the start of the match. Jinte nil, Caesar nil, rest to nine, winner's bracket. We shall be getting updates from the match between Caesar and Kile. Please forgive me for not screening it. Actually, I planned to do two live streams at the same time, but one of my tripods is broken from travel. But also the data costs this match, this side, are way, way, way too much. Around three times more than the data costs I'm used to. Table remains open. Caesar will waste no time in going for the reds. Jinte is now an accomplished tournament player, especially after winning a very similar competition that was organized at Billiards Cafe in Zambia across the border. During his victory speech, an interview which I was recording myself, he said he wanted to play Ibra and Caesar. What? Thou shall ask, thou shall be given. Here is Caesar for Jinte. They are racing to nine. It is speed and accuracy at work. Uganda versus Malawi. Nil, nil. Caesar opens his one and only dead ball, which in the process ends up opening the black ball as well, meaning he has the advantage, the upper hand, to go one game up. Very attack-minded players, both of them. The difference is that Jinte is a lot faster in his play and in his thinking. Caesar follows his strategy and sticks to it, and most of the time he ends up winning. Jinte will get you as an opponent by surprise. Play one good shot, open up the game and finish it in no time. The match he won in his second round last life was the fastest of the tournament so far. He was even faster than any of Ganda Ganda's wins in the tournament thus far. Caesar, nil. Jinte, nil. Not a bad shot from Caesar. Simple, precise, and accurate, drawing the white ball backwards inside motion and can see his red ball in full. He has a very serious looking face, that means he takes this opponent now seriously. And yet he misses. What can Jinte do? Sitem Biso Doge Masebola, you are supporting Caesar. Spice Tevian Salah, you are supporting Jinte because he has land. And Jinte does the best effective shot he can do. Block the pocket where Caesar has his red ball. Caesar responds by removing his red. But unlucky enough for him, the red ball is almost frozen against the cushion. It is a dead ball Jinte to attack. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tables where we have matches ongoing, but I can confirm that around 97% of the fans are focused fully on this table as Jinte continues in attack mode. His only bad ball, will be bad ball, has now been opened. By his facial expression, I think he's sure he's finishing this frame. Two to go, a yellow and a black, a yellow down. Jinte versus the black for one nil. Yes, one nil, Jinte up.
the team manager for the Botswana team had mistakenly given the win to Caesar on the scoreboard, which is just right of your screen. Then he later got it right, Caesar to break. This is a new rivalry in the making, potentially a new giant of the game. Maybe another big boy is being born in Stanford Given Griven, also called Jinte. He's Malawian. If you can see the guy seated one of the extreme ends of your screen, seated next to the guy in black, he's wearing white, seated to the next next to the guy wearing black. The guy who is seated on the lower seat is Jinte's manager. He's walking from afar. For me who can look at his face, it is a face of uncertainty of what is about to come. Jinta has taken the lead out of a very rare circumstance where Caesar fails to finish off one of those would-be easy finishes. It's testament that Caesar now understands that his opposition is not just Aiden, not just Ganda Ganda, not just Victor, not just Ibra, not just Mafia, but now also Jinte. I think the purpose, intention by Caesar was to get a white ball, to put that black ball, that red ball which is almost touching the black ball, but it has ended in failure by a very, very small margin. He is playing himself in danger once again. The yellows for Jinte are open. He can take them away any time. And given his potting prowess, Caesar goes for the sec plan B. I think he achieves exactly what he intended, that is to occupy that pocket with the red ball in, 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 in order to stop Jinte from easily putting the yellow, but Jinte responds by a combination shot. He's a guy who just takes you by surprise. And just like that you can find him going for it, and yet he decides to surprise Caesar by playing snooker, which is quite unsynonymous of him. Still 1 nil, Jinte in the lead. Once again, Caesar fouls. It seems Jinte is having the better start, not only playing well, but also a bit of luck. Yes, you can never win without a bit of luck. It is important. It seems he has it on his side. Jinte in attack mode. I can see one, two, three, four different streams covering this match. And yet, with just three frames played as Jinte six in the black, you are already in your usual hundreds. Jinte leads 2-0. We are going into the third game. Pardon, I said three games. I meant it is the third game we are going into. 2-0 to Jinte. The rest is nine. We are at the Queen's Sports Club in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. It is a double elimination competition. Whoever wins will proceed to the round of last 16 in the winner's category. And the loser will drop to the loser's category but remain with one life in the tournament. This is the biggest match in the winner's category so far. And yes, the biggest match in the tournament so far. Jinta breaks again. And this time it is a dry break. In the MTK says Jinte, you're supporting Jinte. Chanda, supporting Caesar. James Billy, supporting Jinte. Ishmael Banda, supporting Jinte. Prince Jones Mukandwide, you say mistakes will cost Caesar. One up, Dennis Chiligua Joe, thank you for watching. Ebo Kaninga, Lisbo James, Joseph Muelwa, Gule Mpendulo, 
umpire innocent. You say nine nil, that means you think Jinta will win nine nil. Innocent, I will have to screenshot this this comment, and you know where I'm sharing it. Chide Chenya, thank you for watching. Robert Mugabwe, Yusuf Kagwa, is in a fire base. Naka Naka, Wem Gozagira, Dickens be the difference. Haspam Chepa, Kamwendo Yami, Tibigamba Israel, Meshach Mbewe, Mesh yes, Mustafa. Duchembe Patrick, Hoikan Emmanuel Kanjala, and all of you who are having your Sunday afternoon by enjoying some of the best talents on the African continent today. Sanford Grieving Jinte, all the way from Malawi. Caesar Chandiga, the Scorpion, all the way from Uganda, playing out for a place in the winner's bracket. Racing to nine. It is 3,000 US dollars in, in cash for the winner of the tournament, but there is also lots of cash prizes for the rest of the players who finish among the top eight, as well as the top eight in the ladies category. Ladies are just 32, but there is also 1,000 US dollars for the winner in the ladies category. We are in the semifinals of the losers bracket and also semis of the winners bracket. It's the winners and losers in at the semi-final stage. Caesar also in attack mode. He has two options. Either to make a very slow shot, put that red in the corner pocket and try to maintain the white ball as is or to try and open up the black ball. It seems he's going for the second option. And once again, maybe Maybe, maybe, I'm not so sure that he got what exactly he wanted, but I think he'll be good to go. Putting that black ball in the corner pocket closest to your screen. As long as he doesn't have nerves, this one he can do anytime, any day. And yes, he sinks it in. Jinte 2, Caesar 1. And in the meantime, as for the game between Ibra and Kine, that one, seven frames have been played. Kile is leading 4-3 against Ibra. That one is being streamed on Queen's Pool Academy page if you want to watch it live. Kile 4, Ibra 3. And for those who are watching that match in the last few minutes, I did stop that stream. Not only because this match was most anticipated from the majority of you, whom of course are meant to serve, but also the fact that Kile's dress code was not good for live streaming. And the organizers were doing nothing about it. Sorry for those who are hurt by that decision. In the meantime, Caesar still leads still trails, I'm sorry, still trails 2-1 against Jinte. Last time Jinte participated in a tournament of this sort, he was a no-name. He was little known. He started off in the first round by winning 9-2, then 9-3, and before we could give him any kind of attention, he was in the semi-finals against Ibra. That was in the winner's category. Here he is. He is one guy who will take his opponent by surprise. Before you know, the game is down. You will think he will want to try and put one ball and then maybe play a safety shot. 
then he will start with an, a game opening shot and then see you off in the next few seconds. This time he misses and misses against exactly the wrong opponent. Caesar never allows you back on table when given these kinds of opportunities. And Genta now knows what is about to happen. The look on Caesar's face is the same look when he's playing against the likes of Aiden, the likes of Jerry, the likes of Ibra, the likes of Victor. It is the same look he's, he's having against Genta. Now that means that speaks of how highly top players are starting to rate Jinte. He has a lot of words, Jinte, when you get close to him, but very selective when he's trying to choose opponents, especially to try and play many matches with. He will beat you and then invite you for a money match to make you angry and then keep away from you for the next month. And before you know it, he's drawn against you in the next tournament and you won't find it easy against him. That is exactly what he's doing. He plays hard to catch. But even in the tournaments, he's hard to catch. Before he started playing big tournaments like this one, he was so routine in small, small, small money matches, especially in venues where tournaments are happening, but he only concentrated on fishing from players who are out of the tournament, taking, over the, taking advantage of the fact that they did not know him. My good friend Dennis Ongom, who now resides in Zambia, told him before he could know who Jinte was, Jinte almost took all his kwacha. He was not playing in tournaments till he was tempted to participate in the Billiards Cafe Double Elimination Annual Comp, which he won. Now everybody knows him. He has no more chance of fishing or hunting. He has to participate in tournaments. Here we are. He's into the round in the third round in the winners category. Still two lives intact for both players. But this is Jinta's biggest test ever since winning the Billiards Cafe Double Elimination Comp. This is now Caesar in attack. The two players are attack-minded like I told you, but the difference is that for Caesar, he follows a very strict pattern, takes his time to think and execute his shot. He kills you slowly. Jinta kills you first. Both are effective winners, but one of them will have to drop out of this tournament in the next 30 minutes or so. That shot is not effective by Caesar. He intended to get white ball to start with the, yeah, the red closest to your screen. Instead, he gets the opposite. And in the follow-up shot, he ends up snookering himself. He will try to play off the cushion slowly, maybe to set opposite. He ends up setting advantage Jinte. This is a safety shot. I'm not sure that all of Caesar's red is snookered. He can probably see a part of it. I don't know if he can port. It seems he's going for the port. He ports. And somehow, white ball is intercepted by the yellows, and Caesar gets a perfect cue ball for the black, which you all know he will sink in the center pocket and now leads 3-2 after going 2-0 down. The young man born in the Madi area of West Nile in Uganda is taking on the young man from Blantyre in Malawi with the whole of the African pool fraternity having their tips on the toes. 
Caesar, after losing the first two, has won the next three and now leads 3-2. Three, three minutes of timeout for Jinte. Live commentary will be resuming when Jinte returns. For now, see you in the comments section. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with Caesar breaking, and he sinks in one red. Table is open. Not so clear which uh, which is the obvious beta color of balls. The black ball is well packed in the center pocket. 
Caesar closes the table with the yellows, putting two of them in the same visit. That was not his intention, maybe. He would have wanted it better for that second yellow to have been set in the pocket for him to use to get a good cue ball for the next visit. He frees the only bad yellow, the only dead yellow. Jinte must play an effective shot. He tries to bank the red ball in the corner pocket with a combination and fails. He told me last night, Jinte, that he is killing Caesar this morning. Caesar did not make any kind of response. Maybe he's responding now. Jinte closes the pocket. It is there are two all important pockets of contestation. The two corner pockets on the left and right in the background of your screen. Caesar is quick to realize that he has no big chance for one of the pockets and removes his balls away. Jinte also responds by potting off the black ball in the end in effect making the black ball not an obvious spot. It is a very mind-boggling frame, this one. Foul by Caesar. Failing to balance the amount of energy he has to use in playing the white ball. This is a fast speed cloths. The felts of the table, which you call the cloths of the table, are very fast you need to have played on them for some time in order to avoid mistakes of that kind. And on one of the very rare occasions, Jinte misses. It's clear Caesar's mind is on that yellow which is blocked by that red ball in the pocket, corner pocket on the right of your screen. He's thinking more about that than the other three yellows which are free. Plays to free his yellow ball, but it's not completely freed. The crowd are just watching so closely, so passionately, but this time they are silent. They just want to see something happen. Maybe they do not support these open these players that much, but they just want to see something happen. If you are in and around the city of Blawayu in Zimbabwe, feel free to come and enjoy this action exclusively with your eyes. Just come to Queen's Sports Club. The pool hall, you will be good to go. But if you're far away, just load your data bundles and wait for notification after notification for game after game. Caesar was one of the last players to arrive, having joined the rest of the Ugandan team just two days ago on the eve of the tournament itself. Jinta doing like he normally does will just take you for surprise. He will draw the white ball, maybe backwards, maybe off the cushion. Yes, he goes for the off the cushion option. Potting is his biggest strength. But this time he misses. Good enough for him. He doesn't leave a clear and obvious 
advantage for Caesar to sink in any of his yellows, he will have to work for it if he will sink in a ball. Caesar goes for yellow in the center pocket. Should he sink it in, then anything can happen. Yes, he does. Doesn't get exactly the white ball he needed. He once again must pot. As if he's going for that yellow ball in the middle of the table to the corner pocket, diagonally. He must be on target. The white ball must be on song and misses. A bit lucky. I'm not sure Jinte can put that black ball. Of course, he will play it off the cushion. Not sure he'll sink it in. Yes, plays it off the cushion and doesn't sink it in. But of course, he's having a big, big advantage, Jinte, to win this frame. Given the positioning of Caesar's balls, especially that yellow ball closes to your screen, which is behind the black. Caesar will most likely want to play a safety shot, play snooker. But I know that what is going on in his mind that even when he leaves the white ball in the position of the yellow, he's playing Jinte can play can play that black ball off the cushion. And this time, any touch on the black will sink it in the pocket. This time it is a total snooker by Caesar. I'm not even sure he intended to achieve exactly as he did. Jinte must play a legal shot and must play a bona fide attempt to play the black ball. And there is big risk of him playing the black ball off that yellow closest to your screen. That is why he is out of sorts. His fans are chanting stalemate, but that is not the case. Jinte to come from the angle. He has no choice. Should he pull this one off, the crowd will go ablaze. He ends up fouling. Advantage Caesar. I think these two visits are enough for him. He will play the white ball off the cushion to bank it in the pocket where he's standing with white ball going to the extreme end of the table. Just like that. Good enough. He will draw the white ball backwards with a pot or even a follow shot. There's a level of difficulty for him to pot that yellow ball and not miss the white ball for the next. Very interesting frame this one. White ball intercepts the yellow. Caesar will want to make a maximum cut and misses. Foul. Caesar concedes. 3-3. Three, three. Caesar 3 and Jinta 3. I need predictions in the comments section, guys. Predictions, I can't call this game anywhere. I can't say who will win. Predictions, predictions, predictions. For now, 3-3. Three, three. But in the next one hour, one of them will have nine. I don't know who will be the first to nine. Sithambisa Dodge Masabula predicts 9-7 for Caesar. 
Duron Kabo says 97 for Caesar. Musa Wakosi says poor Caesar. Jacob Malema says 97 in favor of Caesar. Muya Kwa Junior says Caesar to win. Ibra 5, Kile 5. Shiso Banks says Caesar is winning 9 5. Timothy Zimba Flex says Jinta wins 5 4. No, it is a race to 9. So you can make your prediction again Zimba has Timothy Flex. Matopo Fahad says Caesar will win 9 7. Mighty Wanderers says Jinta will win. Mkesi Onuekwa must be Nigerian. In the meantime, we await the tournament secretary to make a decision on Caesar's appeal. He demands loss of frame after Jinte picks the white ball to intercept its movement through the table mechanism, which in black ball rules is supposed to be loss of frame. But it is the tournament organizer to make a decision. Caesar wins the appeal. Sorry for Jinte, he didn't know what he's doing, he was doing. When a player blocks the passage of the natural movement of the any of the balls, be it yellow or red or black, it must move through its table mechanism and a ball falling in the pocket should never be intercepted by the hand of the player. Those are the rules. Caesar wins the appeal. He is given the frame and score is 4-3. Yes, at times it is painful for a player to win, to lose a frame, that kind of way, but rules are rules. Regulations are things like dress code, but rules are not supposed to be tempered with. They are blackboard rules. They are made in England. We only follow them as 
they are. Biamaka Marajas is asking for clarity on that rule. As long as you touch with your hand a moving ball and you are a player, it is game down. Simple. Jinte has just given Nawi a cheap game. He will have to use a lot of energy to equalize once again. Scores on the left are for Jinte, scores on the right are for Caesar, scores are for three. Caesar in the lead, he lost the first two frames, won the next three, Jinte equalized, and Caesar was simply, simply rewarded with a fourth win. This is the most ineffective shot that Jinta has played in the entire tournament so far. His intention was a snooker. He ended up giving Caesar exactly what he wanted. Francis Chibesa. Yes, thank you for watching, Francis. Caesar just makes sure that his shot doesn't intercept any of the balls and makes an accurate shot. White ball moving around the black and sinks in black for the fifth time in the match to increase his lead from 4-3 to now 5-3. It is a rest to nine. Jinte is six games away from victory. Caesar is four games away from victory. Once again, Jinte three, Caesar five, rest to nine for a place in the round. Maybe it is the quarterfinals of the winner's bracket. Keep your fingers crossed for Joseph Kasozi taking on Ganda Ganda. Just as Nyakundi predicts Caesar to win 9-6, Salongo Isma, thank you for watching. Chanda says Caesar will be felt by Gentile will feel Caesar today. Yusuf Kagwa says he predicts, predicts Caesar to win. Alexander Kachogu. He said it was supposed to be 4 2. Sorry. Gente touched a moving ball and was penalized by loss of frame. Oh, what you call game down. He lost that game. And then Caesar won the next one. That's why the scores are now at 5 3. Betty Tabitha, thank you for watching and keeping discipline at least for once for today. Fabo Chingi, thank you for watching. Abdurrahim Kasita, you say Ade tapped the, the, the table while the balls were still in motion against Ibra. Yes, Ibra didn't appeal. I remember that incident. Ibra didn't appeal. He let go. Fabuchingi says crybaby. I don't know who is crybaby. Is it Jinte? Is it, is it Caesar? I don't know. Spina Shamira says the pressure is being felt. I agree with you. And it's from both players. Once again, Caesar 5, Jinte 3, rest to 9. The intention of that shot was for Caesar to open up those two yellows near that red ball in the center pocket on the right of your screen. After failing on that one, it seems Caesar is playing himself in some kind of trouble. is a necessary snooker, a necessary safety shot being taken by Jinte and you would assume his next will be the kill. Jinte's management brings him a, another Q, Q stick, maybe the killing Q. 
It's the Jinta's biggest test ever since winning the Billiards Cafe double elimination comp. He's in attack mode now. What can Caesar do? He puts, but gets himself snookered. His body language is as if trying to play the yellow ball off two cushions. With the resulting frame, the resulting foul, Jinte first kills off Caesar's ball to make it dead, just to remove any hope of Caesar, which he could have had trying to win this frame. It is pretty much a foregone conclusion. Thank you, Africa, for according this sport, these players, this competition, this tournament, this publicity, especially the time you are according to watch these games. I know that it is a passion for you and you watch it with love, but also we don't take it for granted that you put in a lot of time and a lot of data bundles. These numbers are exactly what the, sports, the sport needs for purposes like accumulation of sponsors. So far, I would say that apart from the first two frames, Jinte is not playing according to his known level. I will shortly be, get, be getting an update for you for the game between Ibra and Kile, still ongoing. I've not seen Jinte miss such a very winnable frame. He now understands the weight of the players he has to beat, he has to conquer if he's to conquer Africa, as he said after winning the previous tournament in Osaka. Caesar increases his lead now to 6-3. The news is that the Michana Open champion Ibrahim Sajemba has been eliminated from the tournament for good 
by Zimbabwe's Kili. Scores are 7 5. News Sajemba Ibra, one of the pre tournament favorites, has been eliminated from the Queen's International Double Life Tournament in the third round losers bracket by Kile from Zimbabwe. More for us, thank you for watching. Ship to Dennis, David Jewel. Chip to Dennis from Mokona. I thought you are from Kenya. George Ndungu. Caesar has some work to do. You can call it homework. How to put these two balls without losing. Whichever ball he decides to start with, it will not be easy to get right ball for the next. Maybe he goes for a big... His intention was for the white ball to bounce off the farthest cushion. He plays himself into trouble by the fact that white ball is intercepted by those yellows. I will say that this is now advantage Jinte for this frame. 6-3, the score still is. Caesar in the lead. He almost pulled off a cracker over shot. Just one millimeter distance and he will be home and dry. Jinte plays a safety. Caesar will try to put that red off the cushion. Any touch of the white ball on the red will sink it in. And yes, he does. And yet once again, he snookers himself. Finds the black ball, but doesn't put it. Jinta needs to start winning and start winning now. The more he allows Caesar to get closer to the magic figure number nine, the less likely it will be that Jinta can pull off a comeback. Foul, I think. Yes, foul by Caesar. Four balls done for Jinta, three to go, two to go. Going for a more difficult shot. Hope he doesn't lose his marking on this one. His decision making is a little bit suspect today. Lucky enough for him, he finds a way to put. And gets the white ball for the black. Jinte versus the black for game number four. Yes. Jinte four. Caesar six. The match is brought back to life.
There is still a lot of pool to be played in this tournament, still ongoing. The two players are two of the brightest prospects in the game today. Both are still in, in with their two lives. Whoever loses this match will still have one life in the tournament. Remember Gandaganda Ganda still in with two lives. Ishmael with one life. Kasozi with two lives. And he's taking on Ganda Ganda. One of them is losing their first life after this match. Caesar misses. Thank you for watching Isaac Kalisa. Swale Bidno. Alexander Kachongu. Blessings Sukre. Owanop Dennis. Meshek Fili. Kabuye Mosa Osbert Siboli Jr. Victor Kumilamba Samuel Njulua from Malawi Angela Bats Betty Tabitha Angela Bats the six are for Caesar and the four are for Jinte Dr. Habatu Agenda thank you welcome Naka Naka Clay Kava Mokasanoa Van Prosper from Malawi Abel Kaninga Senyange Shillings Zacharias Idiro Norman El Nino Marcus Don Demarco Martin K. Fosha Senyang shillings once again and all of you who are on this Sunday afternoon enjoying this wonderful match these are the matches, these are the moments these fans pay their entrance fee for, they are the moments they leave all their work to come and watch pool, they are the moments for the players while they keep training hard and hard they are the moments why you guys load your data they are the moments why we stream these games these are the moments for african pool to shine maybe caesar will want to make a pot and then maybe free that red ball his mind is somewhat on it you see that red ball which is dead on the cushion. Maybe he's going for it now. Yes, the intention is for him to get a good, good cue ball to bank it in the center pocket. And indeed banks it in. It is Jinte's turn this time to be taken by surprise. Caesar raises his hand as these players normally do. Apology to the player. He got a good cue ball which was not gotten as intended. That is why he rose up his right hand. Either way, he remains playing. A bit of difficulty. Not a lot of difficulty for a player of his potting level. He's expected to sink it in, but anything can happen. Caesar versus the black. And the bar is it in. Caesar 7. Jinte 4, rest to 9. Live from Queen's Sports Club, Bulawayo. Thank you. 
The Zambian player Ade is turning out so far to be the kind of surprise package of the tournament going into the quarterfinals with two lives intact. He now leads 4-2. I can also see Ishmael 3-0 down. The other South African player, Tami, I think has two lives intact. South Africa is represented by three players, by the way. Tami, Ishmael, and Buffalo. All of them are, oh, sorry, and Ganda Ganda, and all of them are still involved in the tournament. Jente in attack mode. He must win. Good, good cue ball control. Very good. The skill is very good, but a lot, of, a, a lot more energy than he needed but he will still sink it in oh no he misses and the bow of his head is a total sign of disappointment in himself what can Caesar do He's going for this game as if these balls are even set in the pocket. This guy. Very calm, very composed, and yet very lethal. When his break is on, beating him is close to impossible. He doesn't need a full chance to go for the game. This was not a full chance. He had no right whatsoever to try and win this game, and yet he won it. And not just won it, he won it very, very, very convincingly. He is on the verge of qualifying to the quarterfinals with two lives intact. Now that he leads 8-4 against Jinte. I know there is a lot of celebration in Gulu in northern Uganda. But now lots of dismay in Blantyre, in Malawi. Their finest player is having to go through these dreams from one of the finest players on the continent. Chinte fouls on the break. He's playing not so well according to the known level of him, Jinte. But at times he also misses out on the luck, which is a very important component of the game. It's still an open table. Thank you for watching. Enos to Muhaire, Robinson Matovo, Jairus Masoboni, Charity Andre, shout outs to you, Spark Plug. Good, good luck. Thank you for watching, Slim Billies. As Caesar closes the table with the Reds. Patrick Luchembe. Shafiq Walusimbi, Omar Gazat. Centimeter guy, thank you for watching. Shout out to you, Spina Shamira, supporting the Scorpion to Mahiri Enoth. As Caesar misses a ball at least for once in this match.
it is very unlikely though it is possible the one and only time I've seen Caesar losing five straight games when he needed only one was in his first battle with Aiden Joseph in Kampala when Aiden le- when Caesar led 20 to 16 then Aiden won the last five frames to win if Jinta is to overcome Caesar he must do exactly what Aiden did win the last five games because it is five games to go Jinta needs all Caesar needs only one but it can be done with one at a time and yet Jinta misses again he is out of sorts he knows what is about to come his way he has never played against Caesar before now he knows the weight of the guy whom in his victory speech said he wanted to play with in a money match Jinte is sweating Blanta is furious Kampala is celebrating Caesar is delivering on the penultimate shot and will do the easiest job of his career so far sinking the black ball in the center pocket yes he does and this is a shanks Jinte's hand this scoreboard will read the final scores of the match thank you for your audience ladies and gentlemen Caesar wins against Jinte he proceeds matches on to the quarterfinals with two lives in, intact I remain Peter Chobe live we meet in the next match